Muhammad. That I just we are. I back up where man and tap we are. We kick him around like a football. But you see, we have a responsibility to make sure that you are okay. So, just the other day, you saw our fighting for tasks to be caught. Simply because I know how difficult it is. Those who want to go to the uh, 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 market, those who are coming from China, we are Africa, those are you know, Baka. He's my neighbor. And I promise Baka, the campaign is on. I will visit him with my truck and I will play CDC so you will listen to him for nights. Point the budget, then reduce the rest so those who are. That, 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 that not even working but making ends meet can buy. So the, when the shop fall, we cannot again uh, uh, support scarcity. You understand? So what needs to be done for all of us? Because we have our responsibility as a citizen to suggest to the government to say, look, uh, we got people that go to China that are buying goods that come in. The taxes are too high. Uh, Mr. Final Minister, I think, if we reduce tax on this uh, or, or this goods, it can help our people. More goods can come in. So it's not to go criticize. So sometimes you see when we're not talking, we, we, we work with institutions. I'm the leader of the most uh, 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 potent political party called for democratic change in this country. And I'm not, I'm not going to waste my time. You know, my duty is to make sure that all lives are protected. We are peaceful, we are stable. My political party, that's why we put people in the, the boat houses to fight the cause of our people. Yes. When they're making a, a, a budget for anything that needed to be done, for example, we talk about health care. We have the right, those people, to go back to the hospital because we know how uh, uh, important it is. If you leave the hospital, our health care employee going to a protest. Instead of going on the air and just trying to castigate and, and say, oh, we need to suggest to them, I know. You want to protest, people are dying. All of you can go protest. Yes, when you protest, we know that you're, you're in need. But you leave people to the hospital so they can do the work. Why are we outside there too and, and fighting for them? These are the suggestions. It's not to be on radio and be insulting people. So the, uh, what I did. Female condoms. Yeah. Oh, they get female condoms, they get male condoms. Yes. <laughs> so, so for the females. No, 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 no. Explain to me. Give me the uh, Sister. Yeah. Sister. Okay. Explain to me what a female condom can do. What a male condom can do. So for the female, the, the, the pudding. Yeah, I did a whole day. The female condom, I can call it a group of push and start. Because the difference is oh, the push and start, the milk on yeah. the penis has to be erected before you put it on, right? Right. But there's one when you finish playing, when it's turn out, when you get push and start now. When you play, play, it's turn out, then one you can put it on. After 45 minutes, one hour, it can stick good to the walls of the vagina. So when you play like that, the thing stand out, you just start doing the business. Whereas the one here, when you put it, the, the thing got to be standing, you put it on. When you blow, when you drop again, you got to, hello, when you drop, you got to change it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why you say you go protest? Yeah. They put on serious here. Life saving is something that I want to explain your cousin now. <laughs> why your father out for you? <laughs> yeah, you have now, you have So that the difference there, they want you yeah. yeah. Stand Madam, before sorry, that. sorry for the interruption. Yes. Please explain to me the female corner and the male corner. Okay. So you see the one? This is the male corner. The male corner, when you put it on, the thing got to be standing. Yes. When you put it on, the thing got to be standing. to check for the expired date. So make sure that the condom is not expired. The next thing you need to check for is the trap air. Make sure that this thing is not broken. The next thing is, most of us let us do the thing in the dark, right? But you can feel in the dark, if I can't operate on the place that is supposed to open. This is the place. Right, you put the help. You put all the food in the money. But even if I see the money, I get it, I bring food, I put it in Because Ali, I'm not seeing it, I carry it in Europe. So I'm
All right. Well, Stephen, it's over to you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Senator Dillon, for keeping us um, very active. Um, we'd like to say welcome to all of our um, listeners in Radio Land. We'd like to welcome you today to another fresh edition of the... Um, Pia, can you mute your phone, please? Sure. Your laptop. We'd like to say welcome all of you to class today. Today is Monday, the first day of the week. Uh, it promises to be a very interesting conversation today. Uh, as we usually begin, we'd like to um, send a shout out to all those in the comment section. We love you all. Thank you for following us, though, uh, those in Radio Land. We, um, we thank you also for tuning in. we also like to send a shout out to our radio stations that are relaying this uh, uh, a wonderful program, uh, Bourgeois Radio 98.1 in Monserrado County, uh, Shatter FM 102.5, also in Monserrado, um, Radio Dupa 89.1 there in Grand Basso County, um, Voice of Lofa FM 99.3 there in uh, Lofa, Bonjama Lofa County, uh, Radio Joy Africa FM 97.5, all the way there in Magibi. Voice of Gompa, 106.5, there in Gompa City, Nima County. Puto Radio, 102.3, all the way there in Sino County. On today's edition, we will be taking a deep dive into the uh, the National Elections Commission. Um, we will be looking at a number of issues, uh, beginning from the uh, the leadership of the Elections Commission all the way down to the, uh, the operational side of the elections, that is looking at the... Uh, Voter registration, voting day um, activities, uh, the security conditions of the country in terms of uh, voting, and all of the the meat and greet the meat of the uh, of the uh, of the election. So to discuss that today, uh, we have with us here uh, our panelists. We have um, with us uh, Auntie Miata family, our usual, because uh, she joins us every uh, Monday, and uh, uh, we we'll go to see you here, Auntie Miata. Good to be here. Thank we'll you. Also, you're welcome. You will also have with us uh, Laramon Yonton. Yonton is uh, a regular panelist here. Um, Yonton, it's good to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, welcome. And we we'll also have uh, the fiery Jerry Limney Pia, Jerry Limney Mafia Pia. Uh, uh, Pia is, uh, is also a regular panelist here with us. Um, welcome, Pia. Yes. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Thank you. It's good to have you. And also our dynamic. Uh, Senator Delon, uh, who is joining us also um, as a regular panelist on this uh, 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 class reloaded. Senator, welcome. I think he's having some uh, um, technical issues. Technical issues, so we'll, we'll get to him shortly. So, um, as we usually begin our show, uh, let me begin with you, Ente Mieta, um on what's trending. Um, you're all the way there in Accra. I know you follow activities um, closely oh, in Liberia. Yes. What's oh, trending yes. from your end? You know, um, you said we should check the news. And I mean, there's so many stories uh, since I was last on, and I checked it. But the one that uh, actually grabbed me happened last week, Wednesday or Thursday. 
there was a fire in Bangar. I, I tried to look up the uh, whether it was the front page. I read it, one of the newspapers. But there was a fire in Bangar last week. Uh, a residence and a store next to the residence. Mm -hmm. And as the fire raged, the neighbors and others who you thought were coming to help started to loot, running inside and taking their things. And they literally stripped the place apart. And for me, it kind of jarred me because once upon a time in my Liberia, when families had those kinds of atrocities, all the neighbors, everybody comes in to help. Mm -hmm. I mean, the grandmothers from so on and so forth will come and take the children and all the men will grab their buckets, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I'm saying, when did we come to this place where we don't even sympathize with people who are going through this kind of tragedy? We, we, we've lost all our sensitivity, you know? Mm -hmm. We've lost our sympathy towards our neighbors. And that really hurt me. I mean, this didn't just, uh, 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 the, the neighborliness existed even more in the counties than mm -hmm. in Monrovia. Mm -hmm. The neighborliness, and for it to be happening in Banga, I'm saying what's going on in Zozo or, or, or Tucson, the values, we've lost it. You know? Thank you so very that's much. For me, that's for me was what goes Yeah, I think it's, a, it's, it's, it's very important because um, um, when we, uh, even though I'm way younger than you, but when we were growing up too, also in Monrovia, and well, I would go to uh, Grand Bassa most of the time um, with my father, um, you could see that uh, that sense of, of, of community, you know, that mm -hmm. community togetherness. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, 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 and as children, we, we also realized that um, you, you didn't belong to just your parent, you, you belong to mm -hmm. the neighborhood. So anybody, yes. anywhere could chastise you for doing wrong, mm -hmm. you know, you, mm -hmm. you belong, you represented a whole neighborhood. So when you yes. were out there, you had to behave in ways that will be representative of the, of the neighborhood you come from, not just your house. So, you know, I, mm -hmm. I, I do agree with you. Um, Yonto, let me come to you. Uh, what's trending from your end? So uh, I think we just had a video um, of Miguel, his recent visit to the Bond County. And what is fascinating in the video is that you can hear him loudly saying that even if you steal the money and you use it in the country, it really doesn't matter. Um, for me, it's not just the message about um, open acceptance to corruption, um, a system that has failed its own people. But if you look in the crowd, you can see different population of, of citizens. Imagine a young man at the age of 12 who's listening to that kind of message, right? Growing up believing that it is good to come out, work in government, and still, as much as you're not taking the Ghana or a bro, it's okay. So we're building a whole generation of young people that will not believe in value system, that will not believe in merit, hard work, and, and that we see every day in our political you know, corridors, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's been played out. People graduate from high school nowadays, graduate from college, and the only thing they want to do is politics in the country, right? Mm -hmm. It is because of these kinds of statements, right? But political leaders are not inspiring leadership. They are not setting the standard anymore. They are now going down, you know, when even the stakes are so low and not helping uh, a whole new generation to see leadership differently. I think I took that um, to flag that. And, 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 and interestingly, before I go to PI, there is a pattern here. You know, I, I the last time I heard a similar statement was from Thomas Fala all the way there in uh, in, in Lofa, talking about how so you can steal, as, as, so long you, you, you can steal and, 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 and try to help and give people peanuts. 
it is it is a good thing to do. I think it's, it's, it speaks generally to the to the mindset of the current administration. Um, normally, in a rogue regime, you have this kind of mindset. People think that by exploiting the masses of our people, uh, or criminalizing the system, debasing them, and, and creating and, and creating for few individual wealth, and that now they can go about and distribute those uh, ill-gotten wealth across you know communities and give people peanuts. They think they're doing Liberians a favor, and I think this is this is sad. And I'm glad you you caught that. Um, in the news, um, Yonta. Thanks. Uh, Pia, from your end, what's trending? All right, so before I just uh, make a point on what is trending, just uh, comment on what Yonta just said. Well, you use the money here, here meaning in Liberia, you use it in America, you use it in London, you use it in Moscow. Nobody should steal public money. Period. When you steal public money, it's a crime, and you have to be accountable if they, if they are not held accountable today, the time for accountability will still come because no leadership lasts forever. So let them be passing around with those crazy messages that at least they're good to steal the money and use it in the country. You should not steal. Public money is not for individuals to take at will. It doesn't matter how and where you use it. I just wanted to say that. Uh, but for me, what is trending and is of interest to me is what looks like a drama between the ANC and the People's Liberation Party. Hmm. You know, that's a unique saying from uh, Mr. Cummings that I love. If all of us will practicalize uh, those comments, it's going to be good for Liberia. And it says, um, doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results is not good. So you won't um a collaboration fair enough we have one everyone did whatever they could to damage it you're desperate for one you announced that there's a new deal between you and a political the political party to have an alliance all right you better <laughs> be sure about that and then the funder and flag bearer of that party comes back and say that information is misleading what does it say about the institution that made that pronouncement does it not come back to the same situation of just doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results? And now the PLP says, for them to go into any collaboration, they're not just joining something that is already existing. You want to have a collaboration with them? There'll be a new framework. There'll be new understanding. There'll be new agreement. And then I see they try to twist it. And I saw another headline that said they're now requesting the PLP to collaborate with them. You did the first thing. You lied. Let me put it that way. You lied to the public that you were not collaborating with these people. Their flag bearer came and swept the rock from on you. You now come back and say, we're asking them. Didn't you hear the men saying that if you want collaborate, you must sit down at the table and develop a different framework? Why are you asking them to join you? You didn't get, you didn't get the, 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 the flag bearer? Was he speaking a dialect that you couldn't understand? The man said, you want to collaborate with well, us, sit down. We form different things. We develop, we develop a framework. Then you come by and say, we request you to come join us. Oh, man, it's, a, it's an unnecessary political drama. The man said, you want to work with them, you sit down and develop a framework. They're not coming to join that thing you get. Whatever you call it, CPP or whatever PP you call it, they say they're not coming there. So start wasting our time in the public space with collaboration with PLP. Why is PLP now is a new darling on the line? This, the, the ANC boss say he's the cleanest man. That was one of the jobs they threw at us because once we are in government before, that means you're criminal, right? So we're not clean. But he has a man who, even though he has to go through the case to determine what, where he stands, but he was openly arrested here. And he has a case, right? He has a case here in the great United States. And still that the main party is he won't collaborate with. What does it say about your own standing on integrity? We can be saying different things to our people and the way we conduct ourselves says otherwise. That's my issue. And, and, and I think can I, yeah, you raise a very you raise a very good point. And let me just can I can I ask who is PLP? Excuse my ignorance. It's a uh, it's, it's, it's liberation party uh, of Cassell. Manuel Cassell. Huh? People's Liberation Party of Dr. Daniel Cassell. There's a guy called Daniel Cassell. The guy. <laughs> The guy who's got the iron around his ankle. 
to me at all. <laughs> or, but, are, you but, you know, are you serious? I'm sorry, I've not been. Please, still have that to give me at that time. I mean, you know, it's. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I, I just wanted to say something, you know, in, in, in to what Pia said. Um, uh, um, one of the things I found very interesting is when most of the people I see who to join the the ANC, especially people who you know work in the previous government, there's this um, mindset that uh, once you once you now join the ANC, you become a clean hand, you know, and and and, and, and that now they represent the change librarian. I, I thought that is uh, that has been completely disingenuous, and and, and and the fact that people now will think that because they join a, a different political party, they suddenly become team agent. I, you know, I, I find that very, very, very interesting. But let's move to the um to the crux of our conversation today. I'm not seeing Andy Mira was saying something. But the media, 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 media I mean I was I was on serious interest in what you were trying to say. She has a fundamental question. You you try to dodge this TV? We're not dodging TV yet. And we can do the same thing over and over and expect different results. Now where we are it's, it's gonna start from what brother Larryman said okay. vis a vis um, McGill's thing. Statement. Okay. Statement. Um, I think we have to be very honest with ourselves as Liberians. I will tell you my quick experience. In 2006, when I came to Monrovia and started to gather my children around me from four or five years old right on up. All of the little boys, 10, 11 years old, whom I asked, what do you want to be? Minister of Finance. I found that an interesting answer because they didn't say accountant, a banker, a lawyer. They all wanted to be Minister of Finance. That was 206. If you count 206 till now, it's almost 20 years. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying our children as far back as that saw public office as something to go into because, quote, that was how you made money. So uh, uh, Thomas Fala and others are just the older generation of our children, the, the, the value system was lost. It was lost during the war, etc. So that's one of the flaws. Faladem, McGill, them don't see this as corruption. They don't see it as corruption. And that is why they can easily explain to the populace. Yeah, Steve, well, at least I keep the money in the country. And because our people, I mean, I don't want to say they're limited or they're so gullible, but like you heard in the gathering, there were people who were agreeing with him. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. There were people there that agreeing. You understand? You and I are too, inter you know, we want to look at it intellectually, etc. But it is the same society that puts pressure on public officials. All the relatives are coming from in the rural areas. They need help. They need this. They need that. It is our same relatives who are saying, oh, the man try to build house for him, man. He build house for his pa. Do you understand? Uh, we, we the people have, oh Lord, we the people have simply enforced those beliefs. So it's a matter of, I hate to quote um, Lawrence Brockle, <laughs> but I have changing to. Mind, changing attitude? Change your mind, change changing attitude. Changing minds and changing attitudes because it's there, it's in the society. And, and that is why now there's such a rush. There's such a rush to get into public office. Yeah. You know? Yes. But on this political man, again, our society, how 
do you as a people going about your merry business some stranger i say stranger because hey never heard of you before and i've been in touch with the realities on the ground in my country okay but a stranger comes and he's buying buses and he's doing this and he's doing that and nobody asks we don't ask where are you coming from where did you get your money and everybody including some of the smartest progressives I know who have now destroyed their political career, my brother will not pay. How did you manage to reach to this gentleman who has no roots, he has no political roots? So what we are saying to our people and all of us, the drug dealer can come. I got some drug dealer friends. If that's how it's easy to become a political leader in the country, I will go and call my drug dealer friends for them to come to Liberia because it doesn't, it doesn't matter where the money is coming from. Once you can buy buses, when you can hire a helicopter and throw money around, mm -hmm. nobody questions it. Nobody questions it. I mean, look at where we are now. We have Mr. Cummings. Why has everybody assumed that Mr. Cummings has money? And if he does have money, I want to ask, how much money do you have, sir? How did you make your money? Is it all from Coca-Cola? We don't ask questions. Anybody just jump up there, rah, 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 rah and we just follow them. So it's, it's about us, us the Liberians. We must change our minds and our attitudes. Unless, like I say, I go and call my drug dealer friend, let him come, let be president of Liberia. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 yeah. Let me just, uh, let me just uh, pick up from right there uh, and reinforce uh, Mr. Pierre point, right? I think personally to think about the ANC is to think about a child who wants to pick a fight with a heavyweight champion, right? Um, to a larger extent, Cummings have done everything wrong in the right way. Um, that he keeps saying to us that it is good to collaborate with people like Musa Bedede. It's okay. It's okay to get you know people who have indictment and work with them. That is the way of doing things differently in his work. So I, I don't think it's necessary to even spend time on the ANC. Mm -hmm. They're in their own league. Yeah. Uh, that's why. You know. That's why I wanted yeah. to, to quickly move. Uh, it's sad. Time. It's yeah. sad. I mean, yeah, yeah. And then Miata struck a very key point that it speaks generally to the well. So, sometimes, <laughs> some, sometimes, so that's a, of the country, sometimes that's a mistake we make. This is a political party that is contending for power. They could, once they are part of the actors. To believe that these things we know about them, these lapses, these contradictions, we should not talk about them because we're spending time on them. That's how we end up having leadership like the one we have now. I guess a lot of people felt we should not spend time talking about who we are was, what was his, his, his inefficiencies, his ineptitude and everything concerning him. People thought it wasn't of importance. And then boom, he's our president. So the people who, who are seeking leadership, these, these contradictions that we know about them, we got to talk about it. It doesn't, it doesn't mean we, no, we I, are I, giving I, a yeah, special yeah, value, but people need to know who we can talk about. Somebody yeah. cannot be telling me, I'm coming one minute, somebody cannot be telling me, in all this collaboration, if you follow all the ANC people, I'm in the diaspora, many of the people who based in the diaspora, they believe Kony was doing the wrong thing by even collaborating with the United Party, because in their definition, Everybody in the United Party, including you, didn't even have a, a government appointed job. But because you're associated with the United Party, you'll be a criminal, right? Exactly. So when they talk everybody like that, and then somebody who has this open indictment about their dealings in the US, if, if, if they are your people that you're not backing, say that you collaborate with you, even after you announce and they post it, no, we didn't have anything that you want to collaborate with us. We have different framework, we we'll do this. You come by and say, okay, we'll change it around. We're requesting to collaborate with you. 
Meanwhile, it's going to be the agent of claim. The same thing, 2017. All the things they were saying about UP when it came to the election, where they were looking for fast enough barrel from? Where Bronson ran for fast, fast enough barrel? They say UP posted to be corrupt. As in Conway worked to several ministries and agencies in the UP government. When the ANC got ready, who they ran to? Jeremiah Salonte. He was minister in several places, including ambassador to the US. So it, it, it somehow when you say a group of people belong uh, to a different place, they are supposed to be criminal, they're not good for the country. <laughs> but when you want power, you jump upon the same group of criminals and grab one and say, so the whole party, the whole Liberty Party did not have anybody besides an immediate ex United Party member who was minister all over the place, the same with the other people. So these are the, these are the living contradictions that the people must see because if we don't expose these things, and if people cajole our people, they screw them up, they eventually succeed in getting leadership, we come right back to the same place we are today. That's why it is. Exactly. And, 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 and Pia, I, I don't I don't disagree with you. I agree with you fully. And 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 and, and this has been the general uh, belief across most of the, the political parties, especially the ANC, that uh, the UP is supposed to be this this corrupt entity. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, but at the same time, they are in the same UP looking for for UP parties to join. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it, it speaks largely to 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 the level of deception that most of these political institutions have. And and, and and also what it shows is that when it comes to to human capacity and in terms of output, the UP has some of the best and brightest. Yeah, you know, yeah, you yeah, said yeah. this without I, bragging I, that the I, I agree with you. I agree with you. The stronger political institution in Liberia. It is. A party funded since 1984 is still, uh, 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 is still up there in terms of the politics. Speaks to the, to the, to the, to the strength of the party. For example, look at the, 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 the true win party. It is, it is, it is, it is in uh, the RCU. Or, or if you look at the the NDP, NDP, yeah, NDP mm -hmm. is is at is, is at the symmetry. If you look at MPP, for example, MPP is on life support, you know. So you see, you see, the UP is still vibrant even after it, it left power. It tells you the extent to which the institution remains strong. But let us come to the to one of the the core issue around democracy, which is elections. Um, elections. Are at the 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 nucleus of any democratic environment because it provides an opportunity for people to change their government when they believe that their government is not in their interest. They now have an opportunity to do so, and because it is it is important, this is why it becomes very necessary that that process. That process should be well managed in a way that it reflects the true intent and the true decisions of the Liberian people. And so against that backdrop, it tells us that elections are at the center of our democracy. Our people must vote. We must vote. Our vote must be counted. And when they are counted, the right results must be produced. This is what elections should be about. Against this backdrop, can we, and, and, and looking at the current, and we'll go deeper into the, the operational side of the elections as we go through the conversation, but let's begin first with the leadership of the National Elections Commission. Can we trust this leadership to lead us into 2023? Uh, Pia, let me start with you on this one. It's, 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 um, it's a kind of question, and, and if, you, if you take it back to the public, you have um, different interpretation as to where they stand. And, and it is understandable because they try to play their games uh, smartly. For example, those who sympathize with the current structure of the election commission will tell you, okay, 2020, 2020, uh, 2020 you went for a midterm election. And you were all happy. You were cheering. You the, the ruling party lost a lot of seat. The opposition black won a lot of seat, and, and everybody were okay. And when it comes to the other point where it's not it's not it's not for you, then the election commission is bad. That concern could be genuine. But the reason why I think differently about what the current structure of the election commission reflects is first and foremost, 
You cannot have the individual who is heading the election commission being indicted for acts of criminality. So it, it, it has nothing to do with whether they, they got to be fair with the election, they will not be fair with the election, but the election commission itself is an integrity institution. So a person who's been inducted for an act of criminality has failed the integrity test. Mm -hmm. And if you fail an integrity test, I don't understand how you can chair or head an integrity institution. So from that standpoint, zero. But beyond that indictment, the way she carries herself, if you take it, for example, the case between Unity Party ALP and Musa mm -hmm. and ANC on the other side. The way the neck handled that case before it reached the Supreme Court, you will notice during that period of the Supreme Court, there was a public reprimand for the election commission that it did not do the right thing. That the motive for whatever they were doing for which they dragged that case to the point at which it went was not understood. If you reach those kinds of level, in my mind, you are grossly compromised. And to entrust an entire electoral process in your hands, it's a problem. Look at Floor, for example, Commissioner Floor. This guy, proud to becoming a commissioner, he was one of the managers, or maybe the principal manager of the, NEC, the entire NEC database. Most of the complaints, electoral complaints that came about, Floor had to be a defendant. Mm -hmm. That's what he's been. But because he is a partisan person, and everything he was doing at that time was in the interest of the party he supports, which is the CDC, the CDC decided to reward him with a commissionership. And because our people who got power of confirmation got no integrity, where they would just take anybody and run with them, they confirmed it. They confirmed me. In fact, he was the last to be confirmed because there were concerns, there were protests, and blah, blah, blah. And it, in the view of the senator, it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. It got to be confirmed. Look at the other lady who, I don't know, I think they said my gay record man here or something. They asked her some kind of question, and she was talking about, I know, beating, what, GB or something? Yeah. yeah. So I was talking about Dumba. How do you have those kinds of persons on an election commission and believe that that body has the capability to conduct free, fair, credible and transparent election. So if you had to ask me, no, I don't trust the current maker of the election commission to take the country to election. I see danger, I see trouble, because trust me, most of the country's problems in the past now will be as a result of a mismanaged electoral process. When we came to war in 1990, or in the immediate aftermath of the war, which was the Thomas Kuomba coup, it was because people generally believed that the election was stolen by do. And so since the democratic process of failing, people decided to seek other alternatives. In the thinking of Cuba by and other, their alternative was a military coup. Unfortunately, they didn't manage it well and they became victims of their own making. But it didn't stop there. That National Patriotic Front of Thomas Cuba eventually extended and you saw what happened in 1990 that destroyed almost our entire country. If that is a lesson learned, then if there's one thing we should do properly is the management of the conduct of our electoral process. It should be done in a transparent way that people who are declared winners should be a real choice of the people and not as a result of a rigged system or a compromised electoral administrator. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 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 let me come to to um, Yonton, then I, I will let Ente Miata weigh in on, on this. Uh, Yonton, one of the things I noticed, uh, Pia talked about it briefly in the in the case at NEC, um, the two things I observed. Um, the first thing was, even for some of us who, who aren't lawyers, right, non-lawyers, we, we knew from the beginning that any case involving a matter of rights, where we have to determine rights, you know, cannot be cannot be decided by a by a quasi judiciary body, right? Like like the neck, and that we also knew from the beginning that neck had no jurisdiction over any case involving rights. Once it has to do with your rights, it must go to the court. It cannot be determined by any quasi judiciary body. 
The second thing is when when the net was making the final, when they were presenting their final verdict, if you look at the time lapse between when people made their final submission in terms of the legal representation and when they came out with their final verdict, one would deduce that those final verdict were pre-written. Because you cannot have people going to a case and then in, in two hours you come back with, with a five-page verdict to talk about the, 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 you know something. It, it, it had to be pre-written and you were just doing a flow show for people to come and present. What, and I know you follow that process. What, what do you have to say on that? But I think uh, to a larger extent, they really began begin a party to, 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 to the entire case. Um, you can remember when she was charged it took an opposition, one of the opposition leaders from um, the Liberty Party, Musa Beriti, to have arranged with a certain insurance company to oh, bill bond, yeah. raise the bill. So she became a party to the process. And, and to a larger extent, that's why we are saying that we do not trust the current composition of the National Elections Commission, right? Now, here is someone who was charged by the RACC, right? Indicted. The court in April ruled that they are dismissing the entire case um, without prejudice. So what that means is that the state, which is the CDC executive, right, will have that right and leverage over the theater, um, Brown Lasana. So as she moves into the election and she's going contrary to their hopes and expectations, there's a possibility that they can bring that indictment right back over her. So she's, she has to tread on a, on a very slim line. And the question of integrity and credibility seriously hangs over the institution by the people who are representative of this institution. And I think we have to move to a level where we're not just concerned as opposition anymore, but we are becoming vigilant in terms of our approach to ensure that this process is not delivered by the current composition of the commissioners there. And just before I close up, right, I read a very, very fascinating piece written by an electoral um, He recommended that in addition to the seven commissioners that we have at the National Elections Commission, that there be deployed serious international expert that we had in the 2005 election, we had in the 20, uh, 2011 election, so that these irregularities, these sinister plans that are already you know, orchestrated and concocted can be seriously dealt with before it is, you know, implemented. And I think it's something that we have to consider very seriously. Thank you. And the matter, why should we trust the current leadership at NEC? You know, um, I've followed elections since 1985 in my country. So it's always had drama and shenanigans. But uh, I think it was three, four years ago when Devieta Lasana was appointed as head of NEC. I, Auntie Miata, wrote on Facebook that I, I trusted her because she had not only worked with UNF, uh, uh, UNIFEM, but she had worked with the Elections Commission under the chair of Madam Frances Johnson Morris and my very own mother, Mary Brownell, mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and said to her on the post, I hope you will use these women to do the right thing. No sooner did I put on the post, then of course people came flying left, right and center, and informing me that um, this lady had a liaison with George Weir many years ago, and we couldn't trust her, etc. Again, Auntie Miata, I tried to be fair. I went back to say, all of us, yes, have had different paths. Things have mm -hmm. happened in our past, in our past. Mm -hmm. but when you reach the stage where in your country you have been nominated as the chairman of the Elections Commission, and if you have a history of our country and elections, 
regardless of what relationship you had 20 years ago, I would hope you carry your integrity. That was my idea. Of course, <clears throat> we are looking. We're looking because um, like, like a lot of people are dealing with the charge, all right? My defense, Auntie Miata will always try to look at the woman's point of view. My defense is since 2018, many people have been charged for corruption. Many names have come up in connection with corruption. Why is it that the focus, the focus of all the noise, the LACC and whoever has been on Devieta and Janine? What about all the other guys who've been held up for corruption? Why are we not discussing them? Why are we not discussing them? I'm saying I want to give her the benefit of the doubt. I want to give her the benefit of the doubt. And let us see how things are going. The seven people who sit on the Elections Commission have nothing to do with the voting process, have nothing to do with the counting of the ballots. They are just the managers. Yeah, yeah. They are just the managers. They don't count a ballot. They go and vote like everybody else. They, they, they cuckoo G part. The cuckoo G part is in the database collection, the voters registration, correct ones, etc. That's where the danger is. And definitely, like you said, Larma, we must get international people to help us like we did, <coughs> me, like we did in 205, like we did in 205. But if we leave it as it is, yes, we expect anything to happen. Thank you, Antibiaka. Yes, but still, uh, I, I agree that the commissioners do not count the ballots. But the commissioners are the ones who announce to the people what the results are. And the possibility of the commissioner announcing something that is not a representation of what was counted is real. Is real. So for, I'll give you an example. When Emmett Hammer announced that Samuel Doe was the winner of the elections, Emmett Hammer and his team of commissioners did not check the ballots. Those who checked the ballots knew that Doe did not win the elections. But Emmett Hammer and his board of commissioners chose to announce that Doe was the winner. Yes. That, is where yes. they, that is where the commissioners issue, if they don't have integrity for me, that is where it comes in. Because well, nobody, no. nobody, one man says, nobody who was counting the ballot with their camera and say what has been announced by the, the Board of Commissioners is not the result that we have. History has shown that, not, that, is, that, is, that is not the case. And there's a reason why, for example, she talked about the people who are managing data. Floor Toma, who was managing all the data, is the commissioner who has oversight. Floor sale. Knows, floor sale. Yeah, floor yeah. Floor sale, whatever he is. He knows how to give instruction for the wrong thing to be done. Because that's a system he managed over and over, over, and he was accused over and over, over and over, over and over. Mm -hmm. So that's where the danger is. If the if people don't, the reason why the integrity factor matters, even though they are not the one who conducting and checking the ballot, is that if you do not have integrity, you can fall into anything. A lot of my raise a good point. If you say we waive this case, what was it? He said with prejudice. Without prejudice. Uh, without prejudice means they can come back for you anytime. If they waive the case with prejudice, it is done and it's done. So he's right that I see a trap being set here. You have a case that is dismissed with all prejudice. So if you don't walk in chalk line, we have the indictment power and we can bring that case back at any time, right? So that is, that, that, that is a fundamental problem. And I think we, 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 cannot, we cannot rule out the, the fact that there could be trouble if the Board of Commissioner itself has people who are not credible. Thank you. So, I'm not ruling it. I'm not ruling it out. I'm not ruling it out. I'm saying, hey, we had Kokoya, same thing. Same thing. There was trust along, and then all of a sudden people woke up and we protested. 
about Kukuya staying there. So you know, I'm not ruling these things out. I'm just trying to, you know, not panic. Yeah. <laughs> on, the, on the flip side, just for the the fun of it, yeah, I hope you learn you you and Larman learn something good. You know, you know that you can have a liaison, right? That's a new name that we all learned. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a, a liaison, yeah. You were born with that liaison. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's public knowledge, you know. Exactly. And, no, and we, hey, I, I quite agree. I'm just I'm just I'm just uh, excited with the terminology because yeah, I'm yeah. <laughs> So you know, you're, uh, you're young. Yeah, you're, you're young. young. So that's why it's a new, you know. Don't know the word, but the context in which it was used. This is our first time here, you know. But um, I mean, we, 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 you know, all of us across the table here agree on the. On the need for change for the of the uh, the elections commission and that the uh, the current commission um, lacks um, the integrity and the uh, and not just the integrity but also the the expertise in terms of uh, running a successful election. But let let's go now to the to and and, and I like the I like the trend we're following. So we've dealt with the leadership. We're now moving to the to the beginning of the elections, which is the voter registration. Now, the voter registration is essentially the census of the elections. It is the voter registration that will give you an idea as to how many persons have registered to vote and where do we have the concentration in terms of the population size, the area. This is why voter registration is essential. It's an essential component of any elections mm -hmm. across the world, any elections across the world, voter registration is key because most of the rigging doing elections are not done only on elections day. They are done from voter registration. Take for instance, somebody could say 300,000 person registered in, in Grand Cru, for example, right? And because you cannot independently verify that 300,000 person registered in Grand Cru, you give the elections commission essentially 300,000 room to work within. Mm -hmm. So they have 300,000 votes. So let's assume on election day, 50,000 person turn out. Now they have 250,000 votes outstanding that they could even insert 100,000 there to change result. The way, and, and, and I will, I'm just laying the premise and then I'll ask the question. Opposition political parties should focus more that some of the, the elections resources should concentrate more on voter registration. I mean, I'm not just saying passing around observing. I mean, insist that at every polling place where voter registration is taking place, have a representative there who on a daily basis will take stock of the total number of voter re of vote reg of voter uh, registrants. And catalog it so that at the end of the day, you have you do an apples to apples comparison between your tally sheet and that of the National Elections Commission. So, if for instance, Election Commission say at Oba Girls, 300 girls or 300 people registered there, your observer will also verify that when I went there, sat there for three weeks, watched the registration process, I counted 300 persons. Uh, 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 I can verify based on the names here because I have the same names here. And do that now. And, and this is a question to all of you across the panel here. What role should the opposition play in 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 in, in first the voter registration exercise? And and Miata, I want you to quote on this first. You know, as as you were quoting all of those things that have to be done, I smiled to myself because I said, "Hey, yeah." Uh, Democracy is not for poor country. Democracy is not for poor country. We're talking about voters registration. I think we got what, 144, 144 voting booths, voting uh, poll booths. It could be more than that. But here you are, you're coming up with a great idea. Numerically. How many people would the opposition have to filter out all over the country to ascertain that the numbers are right? 
costs money. It costs money. So those who control the data, if they're not supervised, will still, we still have the opportunity to put in their own numbers. Because from my experience, even with the voters registration, political parties and individuals like us who ran, you did not have the economic capacity to have poll watchers all over the place. All of us had one, 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 one. But guess what? After four to five hours of a poll watcher sitting and watching, they got to go to the bathroom. They got to go and eat. And they leave and never come back. So in order to put this structure that any of the political parties want, it's going to cost a hell of a lot of money, uh, the resources, the human resources. And, and I can't see it. I really can't see it happening. I really can't see it happening. Look at the, 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 the election the other day in Lofa. Did you hear the story that the poor somebody actually took the money of belonging to the poor watchers? How? How is that possible? If we have a structure all the way, something like that is not supposed to be happening. That you would have hired people who went there and they sat for you and everything else, and an individual is going to decide they're not worthy of it and takes it away. So and and and, and, and that's true. And then the other and 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 I hope um our folks in the opposition are, are watching because and also people who are watching this and listening to this show, it will be important for them to to, to come out as volunteers and be involved in this process from start to finish. Mm -hmm. You know, we can have communities where uh, women will be cooking and say we can volunteer to distribute food to pulling places to observers that will be there. We can, on our own, you know, make food and distribute it to them. This will require a concerted effort, an effort of, of, of all of us on board, whether you, you, you know, and, and I hope our people are listening. But let me come to you, Pia. Pia, what, what role do you think the opposition can play in the process of voter registration? Well, it's been traditional that the, the, the opposition does not fold its hands and, and say it is the responsibility of the election commission to, to register voters and just that's it. I mean, from my experience uh, working with the unity party in the past, we pay a lot of attention to voter registration. It is key. In fact, if someone really wants to rig an election, the process begins with the voter registration process. So if you don't pay attention and that voter registration process is uh, plagued with irregularities, the election is done. And I saw, for example, in Lofa, when, when, when Jala, uh, was announced the, the winner, and I listened to the address that was given by Ambassador Bwakat, raising some issue about the election. One of the things he said was that there was some level of new registration in Lofa for the for that election. But the new registration took place only in Kolahun. Um, <laughs> Kolahun. <laughs> yeah, so you know, it, 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 it brings me to the point you're making. If you are an opposition competing in an electoral process, you cannot be weak. No. They said they complained when they heard about that. Nothing was done about that, but they still chose to go through that election. Knowing what happened, what kind of registration you thought took place in, 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 in Colombo? If you saw the result, the votes that made Jared to win the election came from Colombo and, 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 and Vahum. And those are the places where they did the additional registration. If, if additional registration was necessary for that election, what happened to Kwanu Budi? What happened to Vanjiman District? What happened to Zosa District? Because the, the, the by election, because it was a senatorial election, it was held in the entire Lofa County. So if new registration was an issue, why was it restricted to Kulamu? And they did nothing. 
So the same yeah, thing. That's where the, the, the major vote came from. Yeah, yeah, that's where the vote came from. That that made Gerardo win with less than eight hundred votes. Two hundred. Right? Yeah. So if you take that same attitude to the overall voter registration process for the twenty twenty three election, you're going to be wasting everybody else's time. Because once they rig that process of the voter registration, you're done. You're done. So parties, not just the opposition, all the parties that intend to run an election should take it serious. But we must also call the attention of the international community to that process. They, is, that, is that sufficient to send election monitors and election observers doing elections? It is also important to send monitors for the critical process of voter registration, we set the, uh, set the basis <laughs> for the main elections. How does that happen? The, the opposition community in particular, the things they want to happen, especially from the perspective of the international community, must start sounding those warnings now. They must start making those calls now. They got to make the international community feel that something is at stake in Liberia. And it's a break and a mixed situation for the country because the sustenance of our peace depends on it. And because the country is a fragile country, if Liberia has not been delisted as a fragile country, the international community knows that. Therefore, anything that has the propensity to cause trouble and take us by will definitely gain the attention of the international community. But we got to be pushing as, as, as actors. And we don't, we don't have lazy sit down or something after we have a press conference and say, or during the time they register people only in Kulahu. Yeah. What you do that? You say you complain. They did nothing about it, but you still participated in the election. And that led to your defeat. And then you didn't even pay attention to the election day activity, even in Kulahu. Yeah, I mean, my, my, I mean, my understanding was I, I, I don't believe the party leadership at the time was very transparent to us as to what happened because my, part of my, my belief and um, what we heard from other sources was that even up to the time the next had to announce the final result, that the party did not have all of the the the, the data from the different police station because the the, the matter said some of the pool watchers that were chosen were compromised, and the flare with, with, with essential data. If you don't have the essential data. How can you even raise a legal issue when you cannot prove whatever you say is a problem? So it's a big problem. It's a big problem that must be given serious, serious, serious attention. It we must have a competitive election that will be free, fair, transparent, and that we intend to win. We must do it from every level, every stage, to ensure that what's supposed to happen happens. We don't wait for our hands, and then we'll cry wolf later. Alarma. So I think political opposition, political parties, need to start budgeting, right? A lot of times people talk about um, pool washing, right? They focus more on the end um, of it as opposed to the, the actual um, photo registration process. Um, so opposition political party needs to start thinking in ways that um, they can start budgeting for that. Um, as per the National Elections Commission, we have, I think, a little over 2,000 precincts, right? and 5,900 mm -hmm. 5, uh, polling centers, right? This number is expected to increase, right? Owing to if if um, the government does, you know, conduct the national census and, and all of that. So we, we are talking about almost like six, 7,000 individuals that we have to mobilize mm -hmm. across this uh, uh, prison. Um, and understanding the, the economics, you know, of, 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 of electioneering process, you understand most of our young people are unemployed. Um, you need to sustain them when they're, when they are, you know, taking up those roles. So political parties need to, you know, look in that direction, start mobilizing resources and budgeting towards that. Um, their efforts should not just stop at, you know, civic campaign doing vote, uh, voter registration, but also it's also important to look into some of the irregularities, right? Um, our voter registration system is manual. So most of the you know people that we send the election uh, um, enumerators that we send out, some of them have we have seen cases where they have excess of forms that they fill in their in individual homes, right? Uh, you have cases of people coming across the borders, right? As far as our borders are, right? Mm -hmm. Registering mm -hmm. as Liberians without verification, you have um, the issue of um, people doing double registration. You go to District Twelve, for example register, move, and then go to District 7, register. So how do we deal with all that, right? I think we have to move. And, and, and part of what the Election Commission did when they presented their budget, I think 91 million, a little over 91 million, that they need for the conduct of the 2023 election, they said that they want that money not only to conduct the election, but also to move away from the manual system to, to um, 
biometric system, right? So we need that to happen. We need to start calling on our lawmakers now to ensure a timely disbursement of that amount so that because that process takes a lot of time, right? A transition from mono to biometric is a lot of time. You have to train people, you have to, you know, get expertise and everything. So we have to move towards, you know, calling our representative, calling our senators, political, uh, opposition political parties now have that role to play, right? The senators and representatives are in the house to move in that direction. I think um, it will help to allow you to stand. Thank you. And, and let me say this on, on, on this subject. Uh, I think, um, uh, but we, you know, when we talk about opposition political parties, um, we should not also ignore the fact that uh, we should call on Liberians in general because election matter should be a matter that every Liberian should be concerned. And this is where I would think we need to start having people volunteers. You know, we need to have volunteers. Liberians need to take this 2023 elections very seriously. Very seriously. Uh, 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 they need to form themselves into, into groups, election, voter registration, monitoring groups in communities. They need to be watchdogs in their community. They need to be involved in this process from day one to the last day. If it means that you will go there, take your food in the evening, sit down to the polling place near your house and, and, and monitor and conduct your own tally of activity. We need to monitor this process from the voter registration. If we lose track of it, beginning voter registration, it's, it's kumbaya for us in 2023. So we need to pay serious attention and, and, and our political institution, they have to now begin to look into this matter. Liberians should volunteer their services, be watchdogs in, in your community from, from, from the day one to how many days election registration, voter registration will take place, go there every day, monitor the neck of several count and see whether a particular polling place have 500 person as they say, you know, register to vote in that particular place. So it's important. Let, let, let's move to the, to the next side because we've done with the leadership of the Elections Commission We've come now to but 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 even before you go there, that's why I still agree with Ender Miata on the question of uh, the pool watchers, right? Because even if you say a polling place, if you fake the record and say the polling place have five thousand voters, and you have credible pool watchers sitting in the place, the essence of the pool watcher is to check everybody. Who and that's why I'm coming here in the next conversation. Ah, okay. Yeah, like next conversation. So we 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 we've done with the with the leadership of the elections commission. We've looked at the voter registration. Now we move to um, elections day activity, pool washing, which is essential. <laughs> election day, pool washing. And, and most of the time, we notice that uh, for fraud to take place within any polling place, pool washer will have to agree. Either one, you're not fully represented there. Two. Your pool washer is compromised. Or three, you can't find your pool washer after election day. And there has been many cases where people cannot even get their election data. People vote and you call in war room, people call in from war room and they say, Oh, John Brown from Book and Gita, we can get a number off. And you essentially lost. You don't know how many votes you got in Book and Gita. You call it uh, Mary Paul in, in, in silo. They said Mary phone lost last night. Yeah, no signal. And then you can't get your data. You don't know your war room is essentially dead because you you, you the, so how how do you think how do you think political parties will have to address the issue of pool washing and live reporting of their data in their war rooms? Let me start with you, Pia. <laughs> to be laughing. So, but uh, uh, a part of the problem is the way, um, I mean, everybody is, is a serious person, but to understand the way serious people take the, the concept of pool watcher. So, for example, if you look at the election that was just held in Liberia, I mean, in Lofa, a lot of folks were there. They got on the road, they went to Lofa. Many people went to just join the euphoria and, and celebrate and say they were campaigning, right? Mm -hmm. What was wrong with having real serious people deployed to the police station at Pool Watcher? Yeah, for, yeah, for a few hours. Yeah, for a few hours. The quality of the people we choose normally as Pool Watcher is our problem. That hurt us in 2017. 
I remember yeah, quite well. Yeah. 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 I remember quite well when the party people started complaining that they entrusted uh, uh, I call it boy, he was Secretary General. Was he? They were Samuel, 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 yeah. Samuel, yeah. yeah, Samuel. They were complaining that the so Patrick was he? Patrick, yeah, Samuel. Patrick, yeah, Samuel is a junior brother. They were complaining that they entrusted the whole pool watcher process with Patrick Wozzy. And according to them, Patrick Wozzy recruited seditions. <laughs> and that most of the UP pool watcher were actually seditions, according to them. <laughs> because in their mind, Patrick Wozzy was supposed to be collaborating with the ruling establishment, I mean, the, op the main opposition challenging a, a challenger at the time. That's what they said. But I mean, look at it this way, Stephen. To have accused Patrick Wozzy, Means that the entire party entrusted such a crucial process just to party was it? The woman. Oh. If you if you if you went and threw that critical process to an individual, it means you are saying take it serious. Mm -hmm. And you come back to all the crowd and say, Oh, was he recruited so sedition and we deploy sedition at pool watchers? If there's anything that should be a lesson learned, serious people can be serious, it can be pool watchers. If I was in Liberia, for example, for the election. And on, just on our election day, after we have all campaigned, there's nothing wrong with myself being pool watcher. Exactly. If, if, I can, if I can generate what the party wants to be generated by being loyal, committed, you know, and standing in the gap. Stevie can be pool watcher. If Lara, if Lara was in Liberia, Larama can be pool watcher. Definitely. Because there must be quality in the people we deploy as pool watchers. But mm -hmm. as long as it is the way we've done it, in Lofa, I'm told some of the guys they grab as pool watchers, even the party leadership, that was one of the leaders, probably the leadership in Lofa High. Even the party leadership didn't know some of those people. And they said it was because the candidates said, then they were the candidate, they had to manage who they, who they deploy. That's an institutional thing. You run on the party ticket as the party's candidate. The party cannot be so lazy to lead a whole process such as the recruitment and deployment of full watcher just to you because you're the candidate. No. Because in the end, when you get defeated, they say, oh, the United Party was defeated in this election, not just that individual. So yeah. if we can learn lessons from those and take that process much more serious and, and review the quality of individual that we normally put for our pool watchers, pool watchers, then we could do better. Thank you. And, and let me welcome uh, Senator Dillon. Um, Senator, welcome. Uh, I know you had a, a, a meeting um, and, and so you, you, you're running late for class, but we, mm -hmm. we call your excuse. Even though you started class, but you went to your meeting, I uh, would like to welcome you uh, back to class. Um, and, 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 and I know you've been following the conversation. And let me, let me begin with this question for you. Uh, I remember during your elections, um, we saw a lot of prominent people serving as pool washer. Your election revealed the power of a of, of, of few things. First, the power of social media. Um, how we saw people going live in, in places where they saw irregularities. I brought concern. Which, and then the second thing is we saw ownership, people taking ownership of their vote. When they voted, they said they would not go home until their votes were counted. And then, and then three, we saw many persons, many uh, credible persons serving as pool washers. You've been a key figure in the opposition community and, and looking at your own elections and, and, and drawing from that lesson. What would be your, your recommendation or your, your suggestion to the bigger opposition community as we move towards 2023? Well, thank you, Stephen, and thank you for hosting. Thank you for keeping the class going. Let me say good evening to Auntie Miata, to Jerolimic, to Yontan, and good evening to our listeners following on the social media and through the various, various radio stations. Look, um, elections are not won on elections night. They are largely won sometimes way before the elections, the kind of preparations you make. I have had, I have contested in three elections. One, 2009. Of, understandably, I didn't do well then. <laughs> yeah. 2019, <laughs> 2019 and 2020. First thing is to begin at voter registration. 
you begin at voter registration. You want to start to recruit people to monitor the various centers where people are being registered to vote. You want to make sure that the numbers that the Elections Commission will submit or announce to the public will represent the number of registered voters Auto. across the country. Mm -hmm. And you also will have had an idea, a fair appreciation of the number of polling places because where people register to vote is where they will vote. The only people who don't vote where they register to vote are officers of the Elections Commission who, who are uh, uh, elections officers who are tr transferred from one place to another yeah. or who in mm -hmm. the other stuff. They are allowed to vote only for president mm -hmm. in places where they, don't, they did not register to vote. Another thing is everything you do, who washing? Pool washing is very key. Pool washing is very key. You set up your database. You make sure you have your war room. You make sure you recruit committed, knowledgeable pool washers. Exactly. Pool washing does not mean you have one person standing in one room and just looking. No. That person has to be knowledgeable, robust, and committed. Let me tell you one of the things we did in 2019. When it, when it occurred to us that the favor, the grace of God was on our side, and mm -hmm. people started to announce that they will volunteer, mm -hmm. we considered that there would be infiltrators. So we, we asked people to send their numbers, and we have people call them. And we gave the number on which people they would be called. Mm -hmm. Then we use another number. Now I'm saying this doesn't mean we use the same strategy, but I'm telling you what it I means. Mean, yeah. Obviously, yeah. yeah, right, yeah. It's yeah. declassified it, now. now, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we use another number, two different numbers that they were not familiar with to call people. In 2019, we said we are calling from Polita Wheels Camp, from CDC Camp, with $50, $100 for pool washing, if you are interested. And by the time you agree, it means you're not committed. Oh, yeah, we'll drop you off. We'll drop you. If you came and said you wanted to do pool washing because you believe in us and you wanted to even volunteer, and when somebody calls you strangely to offer you some cash and you agree, it means you can be swayed easily. By cash. You need very serious, committed pool washers who want the result more than the pool washing exactly. a consideration. Yeah. First thing, you want people who direly want the victory. You recruit them. People can overlook pool washing before one o'clock in the morning. You should have your final twenty. Both 2019 and 2020, we, we have our tally sheets. We knew we already. Know. Yes. So we must first now start to recruit those who will observe the voter registration. First thing first. From their feedback, their results, their reports from the voter registration process, we can consider whether we can carry some on, drop some, and recruit others. But it is time to start to recruit who watch us. Mm -hmm. And the voter registration will inform us the number of polling places so that we can be informed as to the number of race or, or number of who watch us that you need. Two, there are many impossible roles in the country. When you put people in the field all day and you commit that you do mass cooking to carry the food, there's a problem. We had kit, backpack, copy book, pen or pencil, flashlight, phones, and everything to each of our pool washers. And their transportation and including their self-feeding. 
you need to start to budget for those things. Mm -hmm. You want to ensure that the voter roll will be credible after NEC shall have done the voter registration. The verified voter roll. Yeah. Yeah, you need to ensure that you on top of all of these processes leading to casting the ballot on elections day. Yeah, tell your people Anything who short of that. to check the next system to see whether the name will come Correct. Out because those guys Correct. want to deliberately remove some people's names. Correct. Correct. And you need poor watchers who can challenge because they know the process and the issues. They think with their workshop with our people, they are ARP headquarters or pool washers, coordinators, would they workshop with them how to look at the ballot and what to challenge, what not to challenge, what to, 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 to raise the red flag on, and all of those stuff. We need it. If we don't do so, we can run the campaign, we can come across as winning the elections, and we drop the ball on pool washing, we are done. And, and I'm not giving a pass to elections commission. Maybe it's not safe to say it, but Elections Commission SF at the me headquarters. You don't cheat. If you don't have pool washers at pooling places, there were stuff in your ballots and all that stuff can be. If you have your tally sheets, the election commission can change your result. If you have all of your tally sheets, election commission there <laughs> change your result. Exactly. So we should focus on pool washing. So by midnight on voting day, opposition must have all of the results in they must be able to declare winner that midnight and not only that it must be that you must put the numbers up put the numbers yeah. out announce the numbers announce it marching along with your tally sheets and by the time election commission know that you know what you're doing they dare not try it exactly now now we, yeah we, I, I think before you go for i think i agree with taylor because we even though we want to make sure things are done well, we got to be responsible. We cannot go about declaring results when the election commission has not done so. So what yeah, is it? No, no, put your figures out. I, I fully agree with you. Yeah, you can put your figure out. Yeah, but your figure doesn't mean you say I have one. You say this is what I have. We can't oh, declare. Yeah, you definitely yeah, 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 technical. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to do. In as much as we continue to criticize the, all the wrongs that are happening now in a society, we too cannot be proponents of the wrong thing as well. Yeah, we'll put, we put, put your yeah, 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 official. That's all. No, you cannot declare. The worst thing you is what I'm responding to. I'm not. No, but but Pia, Pia, you live here in the US. Live here in the US. People put number out and make projections. You can't declare victory. No, you can make projections. You watch CNN. You can when make CNN projections. Ready, when CNN read it, they can when, say, when, they can when, say when, for instance. Okay, yeah, okay. For instance, the they want election. The problem, no, listen now. The problem with CNN, let us not mix things up. CNN is an independent media institution. So for yeah, example, the night election you know, Africa, the night election commission yeah. media. Yeah, yeah, so it's different. You cannot self-declare okay. results. Well, an independent media institution yeah, that but, media I mean, can yeah, project. Yeah, yeah. Let me borrow from on this one. We cannot keep doing the same thing over and over and <laughs> think will change. So let me, I want us to go to the lab, but let me go around. Uh, let me hear for Ente Miata and Lama and then Pia one, one minute each, and then we can open the lines at least for for 15, 20 minutes here for our people, and then we can we can wrap up. So, enter me after. I spoke on the issue already. I don't have to speak again. Yeah, so enter me after and Larma. One, one minute. We're talking yeah. about... In... Poor washing. We're talking about the process to election. Yeah, and poor watching and everything. But I think we're putting the cart before the horse. Um, I haven't heard anything about the census. I think somewhere in the constitution there, it says that we're supposed to have a census before we go to elections 2023. So um, until I see that happening, uh, I don't think I'm gonna feel very comfortable. Um, we are not giving a timetable. By now it is uh, August. Months. Yeah, by now it's August and we should have by now uh, a timetable. Yeah. Elections timetable, it, yeah. An elections timetable, which would be dependent on the census, and that hasn't happened. The only thing I heard was 
uh, the census may eat the money. They put chop, they put chop the money, they chop the money. We're going to chop yep. up Fuga Fuga. Yeah, but why the man are not chopping? He's self carrying Joe. Everybody is <laughs> chopping. Mr. McGill say he's stealing, but he put he living in, in the country. Right yeah, he yeah. carry, he why, carry a so stolen money to Ghana. He's he not or, carrying or, money to Ghana and everything, and I'm sure uh, Samurai will say the same thing. He's building stolen houses, they stay in Liberia. That's it, that's our dilemma. So, good luck. In Montserrat County. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. In Montserrat County, I would not only be pool washer, I would be observer. <laughs> I would be in the field. Mm -hmm. As many pooling centers that I can uh, 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 pass through, we will. This election is about the soul of the country. Yeah. yeah. I can announce as a senator that it is official. The president of Liberia, thankfully, I think I announced it on Friday. Uh, the president of Liberia has recalled the legislature back to session. And that should begin from February, um, August 15, which is next week. And part of the issues for deliberations and conclusion will be the census. The census will be conducted, ordered conducted October this year. Okay. Good it is essential. It is essential. It is important. And it is very critical mm -hmm. to the elections. So, census will be conducted this year, October. The legislature will return, in keeping with the president's uh, recall of the legislature, will return next week, by the fifteenth. Part of the discussions, I believe, will be nominations to the Supreme Court to replace the Chief Justice who's retiring in keeping with the constitution. Uh, it is not verified, but I believe also that the president will want to hurriedly nominate people to replace Martin, Edwin Martin and the folks at the LACC. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we are returning next week and, and I'm excited about it. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about it uh, because I, I was a little bothered that being on break till October, with all of these things that are happening in the country, it was too long. And some of us wouldn't have explanation to our people uh, while we on this long break, even though that's what the law says. We who made a law, we can look at that law because when time changes, you change, it with, you change the law with time. So yes, yeah, and the matter and those of our, our people who are concerned about this our census issue, census will be conducted October this year. So yeah, true, you know, and, and, and that's a good thing. But I mean, even with the census, which will give us a global picture about the general population for mostly development work and in terms of how resources can be distributed, the real census for the election will be voter registration because it will be those Correct. who will register to vote will be those who will vote. Correct. You see, so, because uh, those of you who know more about census issue, it's, uh, uh, it, it informs um, development. development of the country. It informs the livelihood of our people. It informs how many structures in the country, how many persons going to school, how many uh, female, male, we, uh, uh, youth, elderly Infant people, and middle, uh, uh, yeah, all uh, that uh, stuff. But uh, uh, you see, if the census reported that there are 3 million people resident in Montserrat County. It does not mean three million people we'll go are it. eligible to vote. Exactly. Yes. You you can be three million in a county, you resident in a county. If only two hundred thousand of the five million or three million registered to vote, Montserrat will have five or uh, three million people residing in Montserrat, but only two hundred thousand registered Voters. Voters. to vote. Right. Yeah. Right. That's why they, they vote up and, some, the and sometimes and sometimes yeah. Yeah, and sometimes a county could register far less number of persons resident in the county. Doing voter registration, people can won't go home to register the vote. So mm -hmm. sometimes the voter the the registered voter could even be more than the number of people resident in the county depend on where people register to vote. All of those things will inform us. 
But again, without being re repetitive, census will be conduct conducted by October this year. Thank you. So I think we can we can we can go to the phone lines, right? Uh, Senator, yeah, I can give my turn to the phone to the to the public. Yeah, Lama, if you have, if you have something to say before we yeah, get to the phone let's, let's okay. Right. line. Okay, good. So, Senator, okay, so let me put, put the number up. up. Yeah, let me put the number up. Um, you have numbers for female. Yep. You have numbers for male. Yep. The numbers on the on the screen. So let me for read female out the you call zero uh, seven. Yeah, please read out the numbers. For our female callers, uh, the number to call is zero seven seven five two eight three zero four one. Um, you know this thing passing, so I have to wait <laughs> for our caller. So the the female number is zero seven seven five two eight three zero four one. The male number is zero seven seven five two eight three zero three seven. The WhatsApp number for those, especially in the diaspora, is plus two three one eight 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 three four nine two four zero. Female number zero seven seven five. And if you got the number story, because we won't change it. Zero seven seven five two eight three. 041 for female for male 0775 for whatsapp especially for those in the diaspora the number is plus 231 888-349-240 we have the first caller on the line <laughs> hello caller your name and where you calling from Hello, your name and where are you calling from? Hello? Your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, this is Chris. I'm calling from Jamaica. Go ahead, you got a meaning. You got to reduce the volume of the monitor you're monitoring the show. Yeah, let me start listening to the chat. You listening, you say, my man. You lose it. Let me take the female here. Hello, your name and where are you calling from? Good evening, my name is Anna. So I'm calling from Provin. Go ahead, Anna. You got one minute. Anna, Anna. Anna, Anna thank ma, you Anna. for the conversation. My attention is shown to this whole photo uh, um, issue concerning the uh, uh, devil. Thankfully, our election is very transparent. I can tell anybody the things happen. Thank you. Our female caller there, my Anna. I, I want to call her. On the WhatsApp line, good evening. Your name and where are you calling from? Uh, this is Kesali. I'm calling from Texas. Kesali, good evening. You got one minute. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Uh, it's a good thing that you do are talking about. This whole photo monitoring process and uh, the production of all of that in our foods. But I also want us to take a consideration about this photo rule update. I don't know how far the leadership of the government of the opposition political party is going to be in many neck to do a complete cleaning of update of the photo rule. Because if the photo rule is not updated again, we're going to wait and wait for the election to come in and end up making noise and the noise in another way, in another way, anyway. Yes, Ali. There'll be a new voter registration. Yes, sir. 2023 yes, elections will be a completely new voter registration, new voter roll. If you have voter card from 2017, it won't be valid for 2023 elections. Mm -hmm. There will be a completely new voter registration. So if you have your voter card, don't think you are a registered voter for 2023. You have to register again. And it is from there we ensure that the voter roll is cleaned up and verified. Please, 
Come again. Yeah, okay, thank you, thank you very much for giving that. Thank you for giving that confidence. Let me just conclude on this one. Mm. Also, that they don't have like two times. I serve as presiding officer and I also serve as presiding officer. And like you said, most of the times the killing is not taking place at the National Election Commission. It's at a polling center. If you have a vigilant pool washer or vigilant pool observer, it is hard to find chicken going on at the polling site. Correct. But if you have someone with dominant, dominant pool washer or observer, somebody go and sit on that thing and play on their phone and don't even pay attention to what's going on. Yeah, so we'll do workshop. We'll do workshop with them. We'll do workshop with them. Exactly. Thank you very much. And besides doing the workshop, we want educated people, not just any matter, but educated people. Please. Thank you. Thank you, right there. Thank you, right there. Thank you, right there. Let me say something before I take the next caller. If you are in Liberia and you're using your local number to call the WhatsApp number, we'll block you on that number. That number is only for WhatsApp, especially for our followers and our listeners in the diaspora. If you're using your local number to call locally on the WhatsApp number, and you know the class uh, go strictly by the rule, we'll block you on that phone so you can be able to disturb that line again. And let me take the female call. <laughs> Hello, your name and where are you calling from? Good evening. My name is Karen. I call from Manhattan. Carola, good evening. You got one minute. Thank you, sir. My concern is with the photo, the photo of the issue. Mm. For for me, when I was there, the problem come from exhibition and election day because the only exhibition is where we know those who register all of them are there, right? Or some are dead. From there, election commission will be able to tell you we have so many people born, all the people have that, so we took a name for on a list. So from there, you, the party or devil that was there at that time going for the registration, you go there and take note on that and keep it for the election day. Two, those or devil, you be both set. And when I was just saying, you know, you have a big, big table book for them. You know what you're going to go for? Mm. Thank you, dear. Let's take this call on the WhatsApp line. I think it's from London or someplace. Good evening, your name, and where are you calling from? Senator, good evening. My name is Sam Doma. Your name is? Yeah, Sam Doma. Sam Doma. Welcome from the UK. Yeah, according from the, yeah, from the UK. Yeah, Sam, go ahead. Yeah, uh, because in the whole Washington area, that's area, uh, some of us who can come there will be a volunteer to work. And you should tell us how long we can pay, at least, at least, let's say, we pay somebody a hundred dollars a day. We can help to pay other people. Uh, and every county official should be on server, we will be a full washer. We can do that. We can, we can help. Good. I am willing. Good. I can come like there. People watch for that day. I come back. Good. Thank you. If I don't want to come, people watch. I can register to vote so you can also be so you can also matter. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, my brother. We'll take this one. Hello, your name and where are you calling from? This is Thompson, I'm calling from the channel Gamma the County. Something, welcome. You got a minute. Thank you. Uh, one, of the, one of the major things, I don't know what all of the other is hearing me. Everybody one hearing the, you. One of the major things we should focus on is the war room. There's a lot of introduced that war room in the channel came out of country. And we had a war room here, our place. We have projector. 
we 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 use the offer while the people are in the house. Uh, competent people, you know, kind of the people that, that some of them knew that when I would feel on this radio, they was here. And we even had child in our war room. We had men there. And the war room was controlled. Our people were shot everywhere. And when they were ready, when it caused us in the room to get in the kingdom, to even go across the river for the, for the talent ship. All the talent ship were coming. They were just coming. The talent ship didn't come until day. I mean, everybody was surprised when they played. People, all people were sleeping. We were here until day. Talent ship were coming from all over. So that war room can help. And in the war room, you should have people that you trust. Correct. Like the way you trust yourself as a little deal. They should be in that war room. And you have people that are not trusted. And they were here controlling all of our. Our, our, our pool washer, and we were taking the talent sheet, and everything was just up to this. So, our talent sheet, everything we got in here, we still got in here. That anybody argue, we carry anywhere, we win any case about it. They so can argue, room, they can argue, she has been certificated and inducted a long time. Yeah, yeah, of course. Is it the call calling from the radio? Is it calling from the radio? I think yeah, 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 Hello, caller, your name and where are you calling from? And let me announce, when you call and open your line, just hold on until I bring it on. Your name and where are you calling from? You speaking to me, sir? Yeah, I'm speaking to you, sir. All right, thank you. Uh, I want to say hello to you and the rest of the panelists. <laughs> My name is Pastor Moore, and I'm calling Charlotte, North Carolina. Pastor Moore? Uh, I, I want to say Pastor Moore. Okay, I don't know if you are that's my name on Facebook. Welcome, Pastor. Thank you, sir. Uh, I want to thank God for all of you. You guys are doing an awesome work. And this is program has changed from some of us because I don't want to call anybody now. Relevance. There have been this, uh, a lot of fake news out there. At least when we come here, we listen to facts. We listen to factual things. And you guys are educating us. But there's one thing that I would say. By the grace of God, some of us are going to be in Liberia in December. Good. We are coming as a team in Liberia in December, we hope. But then we have time for photo registration. We are also coming to have a revival and crusade to educate our people on how to vote. It is because many people think that pastor cannot be involved in politics. No. We can be involved. The reason that if we go with the wrong side, is wrong. This time, many of us, as pastors, we decide to stand with those that are oppressed. We're mm. not going to stand with the oppressor mm. because Jesus didn't come to stand with the oppressor. Mm. He came to stand with those that are oppressed. Mm. So I will say this to you, by the grace of God, after we leave Liberia, sometimes in January 2023, we're going to be back to see if we can form part of the campaign and to see if we can be able to vote. But at the same time, we're going to come and be part of our of washer or observer because we want to be on the ground. We don't want to hear this thing. For me and my team, we're not going to ask you all for money. We are not. We're going to take care of ourselves. This is a Liberia. Right. And my last word, I want to say this to Honorable Yeke, please keep my own apparel. I'm coming to Liberia for my own affair. I have to be part of that unit. Thank, Thank you, Ravi. God bless you all. Thank you, Ravi. Yeah, yeah, gotta be good. The Ravi is a patriot. Yeah, yeah, gotta be good. <laughs> Hello, your name, and where are you calling from? Hello, this is Isaac D. Calling from Grand Basel County, specifically Piano City. How are you following the show? Uh, I'm following. Show I've been following it from the start of the present time. Uh, on, on the social media or on the radio? Um, I'm following it on the social media. I was following it on from the beginning. I was following it on the radio from Radio Dupa. And later on, I put my uh, um, social media phone on. And personally, I'm witnessing it from the social media. You let her read a comment, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, as they go ahead. Uh, my attention is drawn at the 
Labour the big wash up business. For us as opposition, Labour the party, we are all part of the team. We may show anybody the real establishment because I've been very clear over the period, specifically in Grand Basso County, Senator Yambutana Lawrence, who is the strategist. Is prepared, really. We cannot say everything, every preparation we have made and will continue to make for our poor washer. Let me ask you one question, even though I'm the yeah. question of the day. You, yeah. You're from Grand Bazaar, right? And you're in Grand Bazaar. Yeah. Who you think, what ticket you want to go for this country? The best ticket for this country to restore the image between this country is the Joseph Walker Senator Yogi Kanga Lawrence ticket. Yeah, we are Bazaar, man. I'll see you yeah, later on. I love, I love these Bazaar people, boy. <laughs> the Bazaar people. The Bazaar people. I love, I love people. these Bazaar people. <laughs> I love it. Sunday, my man, if you didn't bring anything, we'll see you. All right. I'm with you, yo. Okay. You see, I'm a Bazaar man, and then the other guy is Steve Mandino. Hello, okay, we got a caller here. Yeah. I want it. Hello. From Sunny Cole. So far. Okay, so how you following us in Nima on the social media or on the radio? I'm on the social media on Facebook. Okay. Go ahead, you have a minute. Oh, okay. I thought I could answer the same question you asked. I'll just wait to see the Abu Congo to the back about it. So the issue, um, look, we cannot say any further than what these people are saying with everything. Mm. For me, particularly in 2023, I will be a poor in a rural community. Uh, in the 20th century, what the poor is, I shall go out of the same especial area. When people have a in a rural community and some behind the rich community. Mm. Those are the areas we should actually focus. Right. All right. right. So, so far, so good. That's my position. But, Senator, I also heard that the CCTV to the uh, President House on last week will not capture the thing that are stolen from, from the place. Nobody stole from the president. They wanted to take away the attention from the 26 nonsense that they did to the students from the University of Liberia. They said no fast screen <laughs> TV loss. They said no fast screen TV loss. We said okay that the Oriental TV they said nothing. Then what in loss? We're gonna take we're gonna take it to the recording room. Thank you. But you know, but you know, I know what you said. What you said. Senator Man say you want you want to conclude. I'm Puaka and conclude. What I want. Hello, your name and where you calling from? I wanted to bring to his attention that Gongo says he's not interested. Yeah, yeah. Uh, your name and where you calling from? You from where? Senegal, Justin S. Vito. I'm calling from Senegal. Senegal, go ahead, Johnson. You're welcome. Uh, thank you, Dr. Senator. I don't have more to say. I just want to say thank you for the class, for educating our people in Nigeria. May God continue to guide you and protect you in everything you do. Any foot you step, God will bless you and guide you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God so good to me. My program bless me. On the female line, good evening. Where are you calling from? Oh, my man, your voice, get him. My man, no matter, go back, no, go find back. Will. <laughs> you're back. <laughs> Hello. I'm here. Hello? Yeah, your yeah. name, where are you calling from? Go ahead, Achi, you got one minute to the line. Yeah. Yeah, you've been the 
Who demolished it? The property owner demolished the public school? Hmm. Uh, was it in, uh, did the, was the court involved? Who's the representative of your district? Oh, Thomas Fala. Oh. Okay. So um, I don't want to say much. Because I'm not informed yeah. about you just you just telling us uh, there must be yeah. a reason and there must be issues behind that. So you want mm -hmm. to you want to get the community people to meet me at the office. I will be at the office tomorrow, even though we're on break from plenary, but I will be at the office tomorrow by eleven. Mm -hmm. You there or you gone? Okay. Let's take this one. He come up regular line, Lee Ogo. Hello, and Hello. yeah, your name and where you coming from? Yeah, please, I want to bring certain things to your attention. Please, I'm not very calling for the show. But I'm very, I'm very friendly to your attention. Concerning our situation. In where are you calling Rambo from? Right now. Where are you calling from? From Morocco. The students in Morocco? Yeah, I'm calling from Morocco. I want to get the very news. We very need to get the very news. We very need to get the very news. We very need to get the Because the struggle we are in here is not very easy, Chief. That's why I'm ready for you. Postman, we raised this issue. We raised your issue with the Minister of Education, and we were informed, and it said it was credible that the ministry, the government through the Minister of Education, was going to settle your issue, and they have started to settle the issue. Well, for me, I don't really know what they're talking about. I'm not a student. I'm not here yet. Oh, okay. I'm not here. Okay. Okay. So, what is the issue? I thought it was a student issue because I got involved with the Ministry of Education and decided they were going to handle that issue. So what is actually the issue, sir? But now what's the issue? How you got there? How you got there? How you got to Morocco? I never asked the other people how to get, but we are here to cross to Europe. Minutes. That's our intention. Minutes. That government carry you there and they abandon you, or how you got there? Why your mission in Morocco? They want to cross. Oh, you yeah. want to cross the you Europe. want to cross the sea to go to Europe? Exactly. And, and you want, you want to help there. you to cross the sea? <laughs> Yeah, and you want us to help you to cross the sea? I'm not saying that you should help us to cross the sea. Nobody will ask someone to get over the sea and cross. Exactly. But that was our intention to come here. But we was 11, we went to the water side, and when the time to where the water area is, uh, it's, very, it's very far. It's far. So, luckily for me, I'm here. The other people are there. Uh, there's the, so what you really want us to do? I give you more than three minutes because you are Liberian all over the country. You could be stranded. Tell us something specifically you want to do. If you can do, we will we, we, we tell you. Yeah, 
Ladura, Ladura, and Massa in Morocco. For me, I will get to the way you went there when I'm correct. The way you went there when I'm correct. You got your document? Oh, I don't have no document. I'm going to rule the two layers. You're making it difficult now. Okay. Call it no more after the show, yeah? Call it no more after the show. Okay, sir. Okay, Chief. Hello, Yamina. Where are you calling from? Good evening, sir. Thank you very much. Sorry, we gotta let you go again. I understand you. your line is very, very. Yeah, you gotta listen. Yeah, to would you want to even get anything? Hello, caller, your name, where are you calling from? Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. My name is Peter. I call from Minnesota. Peter. Uh, my attention. Yeah, Peter. Two. I call from Minnesota. Peter. Two. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Senator, and the rest of the other folks on the, on, the, on the platform. We are following this show. It's very interesting to some of us in the diaspora. I want to thank you for all that you do for country. Uh, my attention has been drawn to the issue of the election that we find it, uh, uh, at this time where we can educate the, the We We're losing you, Peter. Ah, we lost oh. Peter right there. Eh? So, what's the time there? Eh? We'll take four more calls and then we'll call it a night. Yep. I think, yeah, four more calls, we'll call it a night. Call on the WhatsApp line, your name, and where are you calling from? My name is Lewis Johnson. Uh, one of your third followers coming from Philadelphia, the USA. Well, Johnson, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Senator, sir, I like, want to bring it up to you guys. I don't know how it is, but I think it would be a brilliant idea if they did to look at it and discuss it because the election is money. And I think, and I feel that maybe if we can open, if you guys can open an account and do a dollar rally, I think it would be 2023 election. To be able to take care of some issue like out of the art of food washer and other things. Yeah, if that is also part of the plan, the strategy, and all of that stuff. So by the time we announce a ticket, <laughs> we'll go into full gear. We we'll re we'll really, really appreciate that. Senator. Yeah. We'll yeah. Really appreciate that. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, Johnson. Okay, let's take another one here. Hello, your name and where are you calling from? My name is Smooth when I call from Vonjama Lofa. Vonjama Lofa? Yeah. How are you following the show? Well, the show is good. I've been following the show a long time. Okay. Go ahead, you got a minute. Uh, actually, I think it would be good, like uh, the previous caller said from our listening from Basel. Uh, the nominee and uh, the number of would be the best ticket. So if on Lofa you want Boaka Nyombi ticket? Yeah, I'm going to buy 
Very good. Thank you, Padre. Thank you. Okay, we'll take this now one on the female line. Hello, your name and where are you calling from? Hello? Yes, female caller, go ahead. You got to lower the volume of the device you're following through. So the star can't yeah. be late. If you want to listen to yourself through the thing you're listening about that, listen through the telephone. No. No, no, no. We're going to go ahead. Yeah. We'll take this one. You calling my rec my personal number, you're not getting on the line. You're high head. I'm a prof. I got to keep the room. We get three numbers to your way now. Say, good evening, your name. Where are you calling from? Uh, good evening to your uh, guest on the show. My name is uh, Sam Siakor. I'm a resident of Bonn County, yeah, but I am in Go ahead, Mr. Siaka. Go ahead, Mr. Siaka. Sir, now, this thing you're doing is a require of all education at the interior level. Yeah. It's not just about Monrovia. The lie you are put on in Monrovia, you need to follow it up in the other counties so you can still build this yourself in some of the countries. Remember, most of our people who are going for election this coming year, both of them will join the CDC because of the money. Because of the government's solidarity, both of them are alarming with the, the, the present regime. So, come in the case, you have to go across the country and start beginning to build yourself and begin to expose to people in various countries. They look at the Monrovia, I think of the office in GNI. On this, and I've been trying to to WhatsApp their WhatsApp number to message you for no response. Please do that. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. We just lost the other caller. I got you. I was trying to get to you. We'll take one more caller, one more, and then we are here. Hello, caller. Your name and where are you calling from? Hello, your name and where you calling from? Okay, I think we lost that one. Call out your name and where you calling from? Okay, let me give the female. Say and me a Let me get a female. Hello? Hello, your name and where you calling from? Hello. You on the line? Hello? Yeah, go ahead, your name and where you calling from? I think I'm D. Rawa calling for Senko. Madam Rabba, welcome. You yeah, got a meaning. D. Rawa. D. Rawa. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. My point I want to lay here is I don't care if they can get inside and get them from there. If they want to be too full, if they want to be too full, if they want to be too much money there and do the right thing. So, go wash out. We'll go on the ruling star and see to 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 compromise the interest. All they need to do is if they want to be sincere, they will be sincere because there will be some people they will come be then they are on the opposition side. Well, but they are not on the opposition side. You go to this very very careful. We'll check them. Very careful. Yeah. We'll check them. Very very careful. You want be poor washer? No, I don't want to be poor washer. What do you want be? I don't want to be washer. You're ready to start a vote? <laughs> we are, we are, we are the starting vote in the country here, yeah, Baba. Okay, good. Don't, we don't participate in, 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 in party. We don't participate in Kathy Latin. Mm. You know what? The whole thing is for that. We are starting vote in the country here. Yeah. So the silent voter will all make good decisions. Thank you, my dear. Well, that's how we call it a night on the telephone line. Yep. If you are still calling, uh, please know that everything has to come to an end. Stephen, I have done with your callers. It's up yeah, to yeah. You. Thank you, Senator, for, for 
keeping up the calls. I would like to say thanks to all of our callers for um, for their input on the conversation. I think uh, we are listening, and we reach a time where uh, we can now wrap up because we um, it's, it's after two hours. And uh, let us also say thank you to our radio station, uh, Pushwa Radio FM ninety eight point one, there in Monserrado. Shata FM 102.5 in Montserrat County, also uh, Radio Dupa, all the way there, FM 89.9, all the way there in Grand Paso County, a voice of Lofa FM 99.3, there in Vonjima, Radio Joy Africa 97.5 in Magibi County, voice of Gompa FM 106.5, there in uh, Ganta, Nima County, and Puto Radio FM 102. Three there in Sino County, all the way in the southeast. Uh, we will be having some other radio station in, in Banga, uh, Grand Chisia shortly to join our list, and we will be in subsequent time broadcasting from across the entire country. Um, um, it was a fascinating conversation. I, I'm happy that you all were able to join us. Thank you to all of our people in the comment section. In closing, uh, let me begin with you, um, Yonton. What are your 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 final thoughts? I think our people, um, we just need to coordinate this whole uh, topic on the pool washing, um, as well as the, the voter registration process. But I think the bulk of the comments were stimulating. Our people want to get involved. Um, we have to learn from the mistakes of the past. We have to build on the election, the back-to-back -back election of Senator Dillon. I think to a larger extent, we can even use that as a model, um, Montserrat County and you know and carry across the, the 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 remaining 14 counties because that was very effective um but yeah let's get the people involved um let's build a program around it and move into the election of 2023. thank you um um pierre well in addition to all that we've discussed today one of the things that have caught my attention well in the u.s here when you go into those election they consider the issue of turnout to be very important. So you see, as the 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 the, um, the congressional elections will be taking place in November, what you see Democrats and Republicans doing separately is to mobilize their Get out of here. to be able to turn out. We have two perspectives to do that on with regards to the Liberian elections. One. We have to mobilize our partisans and sympathizers to see the need to register to vote. After they do the registration, during the election time, we also have to have an effective outreach system that will mobilize them to vote. Get out of the Yeah, consistently I follow the Liberian elections. You will realize that sometimes, like the last one, I think it was 2.1 million registered voters. Yes. yes. But the number of people who showed the vote were far less than that. It doesn't make much sense to me that I will go stand in a line, either under the sun or under the rain, just to get registered. And I don't give a heck about turning out to utilize what I suffer for. But if it means that we as institutions will have to do something extra to motivate them, to mobilize them to see the need, not just to register, but to vote, it will be a clear path that could take us to defeating a group of people who are currently in power. Thank you. Thank you, Pierre. Uh, Ajay Well, um, my fellow citizens, um, Senator, thank you very much for having the class. I do enjoy coming in and, and making my little contribution because I think it's so important for every single one of us who know that what is happening to our country, the path that is going, if you care about Liberia, You've got to come on board to save Liberia. Um, there's no more sitting on the fence. Um, the future of our children are being washed away. Young people have no future in the country. So it's up to all of us. I, I can promise the senator and other Liberians that time permitting, I myself will be on the ground. I want to observe, nobody has to pay me. So that is the kind of attitude that each and every one of us who can make it. I'm very pleased with a pastor from North Carolina who said he's coming. That is what we need, every single person. Not all of us will be able to vote, but at least 
people can come on the ground and help to educate the people in their area, etc. And, you know, it's up to us. It's up to us. If we don't do it, if we don't do it, then we're just going to let everything go. Everybody has to put their 100% in this exercise, in this exercise. And that's all we can do. That's all we can do. Oh, by the way, um, someone in the comments last week asked what I had in this cup. No, it's not liquor. It's not alcohol. <laughs> it's coffee. In fact, it's so cold now, but it's coffee. You know, you, you need a warm drink as you're talking. Yeah, yeah, so, voice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I got more class than that. How can I sit and have whiskey in a cup, drinking it on a talk show called yeah, The right. So, and then Every, Miata, before, everybody, before, everybody, before you everybody go. Everybody likes out of the night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, before you go, and then Miata, can't tell her wedding be an alcohol you go song. You see how you no. let me use? My man. <laughs> yeah. My man, my man, my man, my man, me, I want to tell her what be outside at night. Because she said, So let's give them a Friday. She said, even in the Let's give them a Friday. Even in the pool in Moscow, everybody <laughs> left out at night. <laughs> so we'll give them a Friday. Uh, no, Stevie, I know you want me to, I know you want me to go. No. Uh, you want me to, yeah. um, <laughs> no, I mean, not to leave. You, you, I mean, you no, know, look, let me say this. People have expected that we will start this class with robust, polarized, political hot topic in the, in the country, attacking this group, praising this other group. No, this is not what the class is about. We are here to change the dynamics and give you a better flavor of the national discourse. We are here to present the issues that you and your children can sit and listen to and know it is a civilized educational conversation. When it comes for the politics, when some of us get ready for George Weir and a gang to remove them from here in 2023, you will know the firebrand in Darius Dillon and, the, and, and people like Pia and Steven Johnson and Henry Costa and the legs and the rest of us. Right now, we're running. We hear people calling our names and all this morning on two different radio stations, on OK and including Bourgeois. The people already have started to speak out and to decide their ticket. That's what they call voter perception survey. Mm -hmm. On OK FM this morning, on announced, the people were asked in Montserrado County, who were you? One as running mate to Joseph Boaka. Nobody in Kanga Lawrence had, I think, 54 calls in uh, for her. Cummings had 11, and 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 the rest down the line. On bourgeois radio, nobody had 44 out of 48 callers. The people are speaking. The thing is forming, hopefully, naturally. I'm not saying that's a ticket. But I look forward to that ticket. Hopefully, if that's what the well, ticket is. Well, if that's be. a ticket, let, why, why, why can we say it? Come on. So let me, no, I'm, I'm not a standard bearer. And I think yeah. it would be unfair to the standard bearer to tell him who to pick or what to do. No, we, we can, can only advise, we can suggest, and, exactly. and the people are suggesting. Exactly. Let me say this before we close. CPP framework document before it was fingered and altered, and I say it because I know it was fingered and altered, before then, I was member of the advisory council mm -hmm. of CPP, the highest decision-making body of CPP, also of the, uh, the, the assembly. Assembly mm -hmm. is where you go do primary or other stuff, convention. CPP framework document that we all put together before it was tempered with. We said we were coming together with one vision, one goal, and one purpose to form one ticket. We said we we'll form one ticket from three of three ways. One, one of three means to get a ticket. Two, mainly one, the first of the three means to derive 
a ticket for CPP was on consensus building. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. All of us on the show tonight, all of our people listening to us on the social media and as well as on the radio across the country, have you ever heard or seen any group of people say stupid people will be uh, derived a consensus? Consensus is derived by people who are believed to be rational, can develop common, common sense approach, and know that there will be give and take, that know that there will be compromises uh, uh, in national interest. When they say you're derived at a consensus, they know they're talking to, or they assume they're talking to rational people. The first of the three steps, first one of the three steps, the first of those steps was to derive at consensus. Consensus among rational thinking people, people who can be selfless, people who can say in the best interest of the country, I will lower my ambition, or I think you are better suited and I will let you slip in or I'll let you go. In the best interest, that's what consensus is about. Consensus is about common sense. It's about seeing the reality and saying, okay, even though by law I'm qualified, but the reality on the ground in the best interest of the country to remove the gain from all the country, this is how we're supposed to do it, to get us selflessly. Consensus. Two, which was not burning, voter perception survey, VPS. What, what, did, what did we mean by voter perception survey? All the radio pools the people who feel it, the people who will go vote. They say, hey, you'll get all the ticket that the ticket will vote for. Throughout CPP togetherness, the Liberian people through their own survey, both on radio, social media, in the intellectual centers, among themselves, in their homes, they want a Bwaka Cummins ticket. That was VPS by itself. Exactly. Only rational, selfless people, rational thinking and selfless people with common sense approach in the best interest of the country, who have seen the desire, craving of the Liberian people for redemption through that ticket. Until, you know, just because you get right, sometimes you're not forced to exercise that right. If exercising that right, so much will break things down. And when time comes for us to speak the politics, to sell the ticket to the people, we will speak. This show, it's not about blapping, blapping, blapping to show that we're here. No. This show will serve the ticket that will remove President Weir from the mansion democratically in 2023. This show will serve the ticket that will be headed by Joseph Borger. We, most of us, have already decided that Joseph Borger is the top of that ticket. We're waiting for his decision to complete the ticket. And when that is done, we raise the money. We raise the money. We form the team. We got people like Indian Mira, then we'll do the campaign songs. We'll do the voter education, the civic education. All I think what people today, I hear people are looking for vice president and making it look like nobody in the country able to be running mate to Bwaka and coming looking for running mate. The other looking. And let me say this. Let me say this as I'm. Listen, Monserrado County, the only thing I left for President Weir and his gang, they, they have realized and so they're running from Monserrado County. All their millions, they say they get, they can in Nima and Bong. Other places, I play the pay school fee now. Monserrado County, there are 17. There's one apartment in Monserrado County with 17 rooms. I have the front door key, including key to each of the rooms, that each of the districts. We were determined by the grace of God. We were determined who will be representative and senator of Monserrado County in 2017, in 2023. We by the grace of God, we use this grace and this cloud across this country. That is why the entire CDC gang in their whole government, the only person that won't break down at all costs is Darius Dillon. So they say, oh, lawmakers total 30,000, including Darius Dillon. You see the trick? 
<laughs> then, listen, oh, Darius Dillon did not take it. Then everybody quiet. You see the trick? They want to do anything to put spot on your voice, on your star. Mm -hmm. But the time is coming. When we get ready to decimate people politically in this country, I listen to, to, to people saying it's time for ANC to attack Joseph Boyka and UP so they can decimate him so communists can have an opportunity to be a contender to wear. ANC people are thin skinned. So when you, you pinch them, they can go confused for months. That they didn't want to talk about the winter. You ever firepower? After one week, one week, one week sustained attack on coming a base, they will be decimated for good. But does it benefit the country? No. Mm -hmm. What we will not do, what we will not do, we will not lose focus of the goal, the target. Our target is the executive marshal through Joseph Boyka to remove the current regime. And you see what the current regime doing? Listen to my girl. But we money. The school will go to our people there. Both of I can't the best. So I'm money the So I'm to the money carry the I will take it from Gary. No. I'll leave it. Yes. If they go take me, I'll carry with me. No. I will You don't see politicians talking to people in the court. They can't even cheer for you. <laughs> you think the people are stupid any longer? You think it is justified to steal from the people in Guinea small and say because you carry also? No. These are the people who want who say they get they want to retain seat in this country. The time is coming. We're coming also. Omer Boaga is on his way from Italy. When he learns, we have some discussions as we move along. And when it's time for us to be political on this show. People who think they can talk, who think they got the issues, who think they can rub mud on people. You're just hold on, we're coming. We talk on a whole gang in, in, in Montserrat County. They couldn't even spark. CDC, George we had they spent almost six million dollars in 2020. They couldn't get the message. They couldn't look. Uh let go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go. So, uh, yeah, I don't want to get in gear. Let's go. Thank you. Uh, Zizo, 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 Zizo. I know you might get men too, even though you're from Sue, you're from Studa. But what, what happened to your man? <laughs> My man, you know, the man, uh, uh, the, 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 the man, the man, the man, I'm thinking the man I read 50, the man looking at a 70 year old man. What's going on? Even but, with all the mom, with all the mom, a man. But even from even from the university team, my kid, they always been in now. You know, you you were in early at the time also. Yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking at it, I'm looking at the comrade general. I asked him, I said, I said, but I must be older than me about ten years. And anybody still him, I said, staying there, we say he far older than me. What's yeah, going on? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. All the, with all the moko, with all the money. When you looking when at you that? Stealing for the people, you got to be stressed because you worry. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 think, I think he's, I think he's terribly stressed because uh, it's not good for him. Yeah. Why you think? Why you think? Why you think? Why you think President we and CDC get made country tour in Grand in Mozarello? Exactly. They're running away. <laughs> we are, we are. And, and, and why, don't, why, why, don't understand, why don't understand the principal place you have to first capture if you're on the way of winning election at Monserrado? It's a pathway to the president. When you lost Monserrado, you're done. You're done. Yeah, mm -hmm. when you join the election map, you got to factor in Monserrado. Yeah, you lost Monserrado, you're done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know, on that note, okay. uh, let me let me let me close on this. Um. You know, today we talk about the elections, um, 2023. Uh, we look at the uh, the leadership of the National Elections Commission. We look at the photo registration. We look at the uh, 
election day activity and we also look at pool washing. These are significant component of any successful elections. And if the opposition is to make any significant impact in 2023, they have to be involved. And we also need to encourage our people to serve as volunteers. Commit yourself to the process, get involved. Like you listening to the Reverend from North Carolina, come home, join the conversation, get involved, register to vote, serve as pool washer. And let me also close on this. Elections have consequences. Today, the unfortunate and, 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 and frustrating condition of the country is as a result of the decision we made in 2017. And so if we want to correct that decision next year, we have to all of us get involved. Unless we get involved, unless we continue to educate our people across the nooks and crannies of the country, we cannot effectuate the change we want to see. To our own man in the interior, we say, you're all of all, you're not come together. You're not changing the government next year. You're not bringing a more responsible and, 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 and mature government so that it can, we can bring the kind of changes and development our people des desire and deserve. Uh, let me close with our, with our quotation as we usually do by a uh, revolutionary French Fanon. Fanon said, every generation has a mission. And that mission out of relative obscurity can either be fulfilled or betrayed. And so us as a generation, our mission next year is to replace the kleptocracy that we have, to replace a government that is very irresponsible, reckless, and has no sense of care for the conditions of our people. On that note, we come to the end of another edition. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you on Wednesday. Namo Sakya Sama Namo Sakya Sama Pia, you can sing, man. He's falling into me other song, man. No, let Pia sing, oh, let Pia sing. No, I'm choir director. You know that, me, yeah, that. Choir director, yeah, 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 yeah. I want the best choir director in Monrovia town. Yeah, yeah. Where's on? I see what I see what it organ for. Okay, guys. All right, baby. Good show tonight. Next week. Thank you. We'll be here on Wednesday. Same time. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Bye, guys. Okay. Bye, my love. Yeah. So let us be. And you think the time is now? This, this is the time. This is the time. And then uh, this is why two of the 12 years I've been uh, cooperating. You know, I've been working with the government, you know, our peace ambassador with the government. And I have a very great relationship with Malan Sali. You know, people talk about Malan Sali. Has, has she blessed your decision? To Whether uh, she have a political party, yeah. but I think but uh, she has uh, not we have not publicly a, backed the... The, uh, the candidate well, the, the well, I, I don't I don't want to jump the guns I don't want to jump the guns mm -hmm. but I think uh, uh, there's some level of cooperation and uh, but what is important for us you know Manaseli she's living now yeah. you know how we can protect her you know when she yeah. leaves to come back in our country that's the most important for us now you know the lot of people yo 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 all that uh, uh, noise yeah. she's leaving hey, for me, I'm not concentrating on her because she has served. Yeah. She played a part. Something she Two did, times. something she did was good. Something that she didn't do. Why she did uh, uh, that, that wasn't good? We will tap on that and do it. Those things she did, we applaud her for it. Okay, yeah, good night. Now how we going? All right.